Good morning, everybody, and welcome. My name is Pete Renzulli, and welcome to today's episode of Stock for Breakfast. It is Monday morning, February 2nd. That's right. We are into a new month already. Hopefully, the new month is going to help us bottom out here with the coronavirus. We actually do have some signs of a short-term bottom from Friday, but today's big deal is we are going to talk about my absolute favorite trading setup that anybody beyond a shadow of a doubt can implement. It's a price action structure that um, is very easy to spot, uh, but the trading strategy part of it was actually drilled home to me way back in the day when I first started trading, but then it really came up uh, in a big way in a book called Long-Term Secrets to Short-Term Trading by Larry Williams. If you don't have this book, unbelievably good book. Uh, in the future, I'm actually gonna do um, a, uh, a video on my favorite trading books. You can kind of see here in the background, I got a whole library and that's only a small part of it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna discuss the trading setup uh, first. Um, but but be, actually, before I do that, what I want to do is I want to get into, um, we've been having a lot of conversations lately about short-term entry signals into possibly buying some of these stocks that have turned around. And I keep mentioning this, the, uh, the setup called a bullish U-turn. Now, that's not my favorite trading setup that we're going to discuss today. I just want to make sure that everybody understands what a bullish U-turn looks like, because you can use it as an entry signal. You could use it as an exit signal. Uh, and you can also use it as a signal to tighten up a trailing stop on a profitable trade. If you don't know what that means, tighten up a trailing stop. Imagine you bought a stock at 20 and now it's 30, just for argument's sake. And you start to see that maybe you believe it's slowing down. Tightening up a trailing stop means that you have now put a trailing stop loss in and you would move it closer because you saw this reversal signal. So I'm first going to point out the reversal signal. And there's a pretty nice one in um, Chevron that we're going to take a look at. Uh, Exxon, excuse me, and then uh, and then we're going to get into uh, very quickly looking at the market today, which stocks to trade, and then I'm going to show you and introduce you to what I believe is by far the easiest trading setup that has been one of my most reliable over the years. So again, if you like the video, make sure you click down and click subscribe so you get updates, and uh, let's get going. I'm going to share the screen now, and we will get into the chart setups. So first, I'm going to do what I said. I'm going to go right over to... Um, look at what is ExxonMobil and this candlestick right here. And I'm going to actually zoom it out so it's easy to see. A bullish U-turn happens when a stock, let's use this candle as an example, and after a momentum move, trades through the previous low, reverses, trades back above that low, and then closes above its own open. So again, this candlestick here traded below this candle, reversed, which, makes, which is the U-turn, gets above the previous low, and then closes above this open. So it's a complete U-turn. So if you think about what's going on here, is anybody who's short selling late is now caught on the wrong side. So they have to cover the stock to get out of it, meaning they have to buy it back. And if anybody wants to initiate a new position, the bullish U-turn is a very aggressive trade in a downtrend, not one that I would actually recommend. It would be more designed for if you happen to be short the stock, meaning you believe that the price was going down and you see a bullish U-turn. And let's say for argument's sake, you had your stop loss here, which means that if stock if price gets up there, that's where you're gonna book your profit to. But you see a bullish U-turn, you might be inclined to move it lower in this case to book in more of those profits because it looks like the stock has bottomed out and going in the other direction. So again, it's a it's it's easily um, one, of the, one of the core tactics that I use in the bigger picture of order flow and saturation plays, but it's a, it's a super simple one in, in the fact that you can actually understand why it works. It pushes through the bottom of the previous candle, reverses, so now anybody who's sold, because you think about it, most of most people, most active traders will place their, their um, stop losses or, or entry signals around the previous day's high and low. So in this case here, if it trades through that low and then reverses, a lot of people are going to get caught off guard. But I want to make it clear, a huge part of calling this a bullish U-turn is that the candle itself has to close above the open for a bullish U-turn. Now, what's kind of interesting about this is I said you can also use this as entry signals. So you can actually use it as an entry signal on the shorter time frames to look for entries and exits as well. So whether it's a bullish U-turn or a bearish U-turn, which if momentum was going higher and you get a push higher and reverses and comes down, 
that would be one way you'd move up your trailing profits on a long position, on a position that you bought. So it's not, it's not necessarily where you boom, get out immediately, but it's definitely something that you want to pay attention to because again, if you want to move from chart reader to trade to trader, big difference, tape reader, chart readers, just look at price action. Tape readers say, how do I make money off of that price action? A monster difference. And that's my biggest goal with everybody watching these videos. Take my experience of owning two proprietary trading firms. Listen to the little clues that I give. If I say you write something down, it's because it's important and it will help you make money. This is a big deal because it's an easy way to know when you should book profits or at the very least move up a trailing stop because price action has changed. So we're going to get right into um, what happened on Friday. And you can see that we actually had some semblance of larger cap stocks getting some buying action which is very important. I'm not saying we bottomed out. There's a lot of news that we're gonna talk about in a second about possibly the Fed and whatnot. It's, it's a pause in the selling. Nothing has been solved yet. Um, so I just wanna give, again, the clues of reading the tape. Okay, large caps, money's flowing into large cap stocks, possibly some of these large cap stocks that were having supply chain issues, which you know, obviously Amazon, Walmart, and Apple, they were not blazingly green on Friday, but Microsoft definitely was one of them. And Facebook is another one that we're actually going to talk about in a uh, possible trade today. So this is a S&P 500 heat map. So you can see that there was, it wasn't uh, blood on the street so much like it was the previous four days, Monday through Thursday. Friday was a little bit of a reprieve, but again, make sure you're looking at both sides of the market. It's the, the problem that has caused the, sell, the, the selling has not been solved. Okay. So be aware of that. Don't be looking now. Let's buy with reckless. Don't, be buying with reckless abandon. Use stuff like bullish U-turns to look to look for trades to get into. So one thing I want to, I want to discuss. I'm going to head right over. European stocks and our stock market futures have bounced it a little bit. On uh, it seems like they're going to be actually. There's a possibility. I want to make that clear. Possibility of rate cut prior to the actual meeting. We'll see. I'm not going to say yes or no. That's just what's going on. Uh, bigger picture and why there's a possibility. It was spoken about Friday afternoon and over the weekend that there that the um, the rate cut for the meeting later this month might be moved up. Again, I'm not saying it will be. I'm just saying I'm reading the news like everybody else. But a little bit of a history lesson here, which is super cool. This is going back to um, something that was really interesting, and especially uh, back when things were in fractions. There was something called the uptick rule. And this isn't really something that was a big deal for somebody who was swing trading or longer term investing, but for day trading and especially day trading in volatile markets and especially bearish volatile markets and going all the way back to um, the internet crash uh, was kind of interesting because essentially what happened prior to this rule being changed, which is called the uptick rule, stocks had to be going higher in order for you to sell short weak stocks to make profits as they were going down. If market makers and specialists back in the day were holding stocks down and did not let the stock bounce at all, you literally couldn't get any stock short. So there was ways to get around it by trading options, but that's a whole different, um, a whole different uh, strategy trading options. Back then it was known as bullets, where you would, you would buy options from your brokerage firm, which would essentially give you a synthetic position that allowed you to short on a down tick, but that wasn't available to everybody. So I, I want to, just get into what's going on here. It's very interesting. If you happen to read this, I want to tell you why this is significant. They're basically saying that the uptick rule should be reinstated so that if we continue to have this bad news and a bloodbath of selling to the downside, people can't just pile on and sell stock unless they already own stock. So they're selling stock that they own. For those of you who don't understand short selling or if it's new to you or, or complicated, which quite honestly, I can understand how it is. Short selling basically means that you are betting on the stock going lower and you're borrowing stock from your broker dealer that they have in their inventory. And then when you get out of that short position, you buy it back and it goes back into the broker dealer's inventory. In this case here, they're saying you can't do that unless the stock is already going up, which in theory should um, slow down the selling. It won't stop the selling, but it would certainly slow down the mass, a critical mass of people selling on the, on the short side. So this is kind of, a really cool trading history lesson. It brought back some, some memories for me because there were plenty of days when stocks were going down after the internet boom and you literally couldn't make a trade because stocks wouldn't tick up. Uh, so that would kind of stem the mass selling. It wouldn't stem the selling. It would certainly stem 
the mass selling. Uh, one stock in play that we definitely want to talk about today is Nike. No surprise, a lot of the stocks we talked about last week, and, and specifically Apple, Walmart, Microsoft, um, and uh, oh, there's one other one I can't think of, um, having supply chain issues. Oh, Amazon. Um, and Nike obviously having the same thing going on right now as well. And by the way, if you haven't read the book, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, who wrote, uh, who, who is the, one of the founders of Nike. Super awesome read. You can read it in a weekend. It tells the whole history of the company. Really fascinating. Uh, and in, if, if you're an entrepreneur, especially read it because it talks about all the struggles and everything that they went through. And it kind of gives you uh, hope <laughs> as an entrepreneur um, that Nike, even 13 years after they opened, they were still trying to figure out what kind of business they wanted to be. And then, you know, eventually took off. But um, so eventually, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go straight into the charts. Uh, and as promised, I'm going to show you the, the trading signal um, that is by far my favorite trading setup. It's the easiest one to trade. It's the easiest one to spot. Uh, if you leave a comment uh, below the video or send me an email, I'll send you actually the, the software. Uh, it's a free software that I use to find the setup every day. It's by far um, the number one that I trade. So I'm going to give you an example of what it was and what it is. Uh, and it's basically something called an inside day. Now, you might be like, oh my gosh, inside day? Who doesn't know about an inside day? Yes, but here's the thing. An inside day is one of the most powerful trading setups you can find and look for every single day, literally every single day, as well as it is my only entry signal. Listen to, not my only, I have, I have a couple of them, but when, when I teach new traders, it is by far the uh, most reliable. And isn't that really what we're looking for in trading? We're looking for most reliable. So on the daily candlesticks, what, what um, an inside day represents, and again, I'm getting back to this book by Larry Williams, he essentially says there's only two price action phases that you need to know. He says it's basically a consolidation or an expansion, and one leads to the other. So consolidation means price is narrowing because that's the right price for now. And then an expansion comes out of that consolidation, which is usually a momentum move and quite often leads to longer term order flow types of moves. So from a daily perspective, regardless of the longer term trend, an inside candlestick represents some place in price action where an explosion should be coming and you usually get large green candles coming out of that, which is kind of exciting. So we actually have one in Roku and we have one in Wynn today. So I'm just picking stocks that meet my criteria of average true range. And you can see here. Now what's interesting about the one in win. Now I want to make clear the longer term direction in a perfect world, the longer term direction, the breakout or breakdown would happen in the longer term direction. But the inside candlestick breakout is generally a one day play regardless of the longer term trend. So you're in and out in the same day unless it happens to be in the direction of the longer term play and, you, and, and you're getting a good head start on a, on a longer term trade. But it's not necessarily. What we're looking to do is to let the market tip its hand, meaning break out of the inside candlestick, and then trade in that direction for one day. And I'm going to show you one of the biggest ones that we've mentioned in a video recently. Um, but I want to talk about when here as far as the actual setup. One of my most reliable setups is when a candlestick or a stock breaks longer breaks out or breaks down longer term levels and it's super obvious and you're like this is great let's hop on board i'm going to get involved in this trade but then it fails the next day instead of it following through the next day you actually get an inside candlestick which here's the big candle here inside the candlestick you could actually see that here and when even though it didn't break down this longer term um, level it did here so this is kind of interesting so we had a, a breakdown here took out these levels went into support and the next candlestick was an inside candlestick so instead of following through on this breakdown and breaking this level it actually went inside candlestick and look at the reversal of the inside candlestick we are not breaking down through this level but we did go big bullish u-turn here again as we just covered before which by the way that's a bearish u-turn up there as well to an inside candlestick now the bullish u-turn is not as significant i'm just calling it out again because we mentioned it before um, but what is important here is we had an inside candlestick. So this stock is actually going to be on my watch list. Now, the entry signal for this is the higher the low of the inside candlestick. Now, you can see it's actually already trading up at 110.50. So it's going to trade right at the area of the open. So the high of Friday was a 111.38. 
So above that level would be my entry. But the fact that it's already up 250 right out of the gate, I might let it push through that level and then pause on the intraday charts. And I might take it as an inside candle breakout on the 15 minute charts if you're day trading. But I can't express enough. This is a reliable, easy to trade setup that you could find every single day. So I want, and I want to point out again, if, if we're looking at, I'm going to go into, let's say I'll look at the SPY on Friday. Um, if you're looking at entry signals, the inside candle entry signal is just as powerful on the inside of intraday candlesticks as an entry in the direction that you're looking to trade. So you can see here is an inside candlestick that broke up and had a, and had a push. Another inside candlestick that broke up and had a push. It's one of the most reliable setups that I have, and it is super easy to find. And if I'm not mistaken, we actually had it on the five-minute chart on on uh, when we had this monster push down over here. Um, yes, over here was an inside candlestick breakdown as well prior to this big $7 move to the downside. Here's, I'm actually going to come off of sharing the screen. I'm going to come back for a second. Here's the reason I'm pointing this out. I've written classes. I've traded for 20 years now. The old school bull flags and bear flags and perfect pennants and that kind of stuff, they are super hard to find in today's algorithmic world and super hard to feel confident trading. Do they exist? Sure, you can absolutely find them. But if you go from chart reader to tape reader and you're paying attention to what's going on in the market and how things are changing, you'll use them more in the context of, again, what Larry talks about in this book, Long-Term Secrets to Short-Term Trading. Um, use them in the context of you're not going to find a perfect flag very often. You're not going to find a perfect pennant very often. But what you should be saying is, okay, it's not perfect, but it's a pause. It's not a perfect wedge, but price is consolidating. So if you think about what I'm saying, the reason I keep talking about the inside candlestick is that it's a consolidation, which should lead to an explosion. So I'm going to actually go back to the charts and show you one of the biggest ones, which I previously mentioned in a video, but maybe um, it kind of uh, didn't mean as much without the explanation that I just gave you. And it was actually over here in Beyond Meat. And what was so exciting about this one was, again, we had this nice solid momentum move. We had fuel candlesticks breaking out of this trading range. Pull back, and this pullback is actually where we were looking to bid. Bid means we're looking to get long, we're looking to be a buyer. We had an inside candlestick here, but then followed by another inside candlestick. So we had an inside, inside candlestick, which usually leads to a really solid one day explosion. And remember, one day trade could be a longer term one, it's up to you, but the best scenario is one day trade. So inside candlestick, inside candlestick, you hear me reference it inside, inside, leading to a $17 one day move. That's pretty powerful. So you want to add the inside candlesticks to your strategy. So I want to get into um, a couple of stocks that we're going to take a look at today if the market does turn around. Now, normally you won't see me have the moving averages on my charts, but today we actually do happen to have a couple of stocks that meet some moving average criteria to want to look at for bullish trades, stocks that were strong when the market was weak. So you can see Netflix here is above the 50. It's above the 200. You already know a lot of the stocks, including the SPY, well below the 200. So they're in bear market territory. Same thing with the Dow below the 200. So any stocks that are above like Netflix, we want to take a look at, and these are stocks that are showing relative strength. Now the problem with Netflix, and again, it's a relative problem. Uh, first relative strength is good, right? Obviously. Um, but we know that we have big resistance. So we've had a hard time getting through this three, let's just call it 388, 389. But there's yesterday's close was a Friday's close was 369. So we do have $20 up into that level. Best case scenario, you're looking to trade above Friday's high, but that's also that's about six dollars away. So you might not want to wait to then. Day trading, if you happen to be in front of the screen and you're day trading, you'd be looking for an opening range breakout to get your first piece on with smaller share size, looking for it to pause at Friday's high if you have a nice little move in your direction above that level. Let it pause above Friday's high, and then you're looking for that 388 as your first profit target, and you can make a decision on what you want to do up in that level. Um, so some other stocks that were strong on Friday that kind of meet the same criteria. Zillow, we keep mentioning it. And again, another bullish U-turn in Zillow, traded below the previous candle, reversed, closed above the low, closed above the open. Not the sexiest stock in the world, but it's got good price action. Something that's super interesting about NVIDIA, and this has been on my watch list for a while, and you can obviously see why. 
not only is it a bullish U-turn, but it's a bullish engulfing candle. So people are wrong on this side, and now we got people that have had buy stops trigger on this side. This is a powerful move. When a bullish U-turn, uh, excuse me, a bullish engulfing, a bullish U-turn becomes a bullish engulfing candle, that's pretty powerful. And you'd be looking for some nice follow through and a gap fill here in NVIDIA. Uh, and Square is another one that's actually been pretty strong as well. Uh, Square, again, for the same reason, we don't like it um, based on the fact that it's at resistance. We want to see it close and stay above, above that resistance. It actually did on Friday, but I don't, not yet. I want to see it get above there. I want to see today's price action actually hold some of the bullish nature that we have. But what's super interesting here again is we had this breakout to new highs and then an inside candle followed by pulling back. So again, you'll start to notice this uh, a lot more and you'll see how powerful it is. Um, the one of the last stock I want to look at is Facebook. Not so much um, super bullish like some of the other ones, but I do like the fact that it's approaching the 200 and we have this price action between the 200 and the 50 period moving averages uh, for a potential trade. But I think my best trades of the day are those two inside candle trades, Roku and Wind, um, taking a look at today. I really like the NVIDIA bullish U-turn and there is some uh, there is some room to go in uh, Netflix prior to getting up to that level. So my name is Pete Renzulli. Today's Stocks for Breakfast. If you like today's video, please click down and subscribe. It would mean the world to me, and you will get updates on, on new videos. I'm also coming out with a new uh, video series of some of the basic stuff that I'm talking about here so that we have kind of like an orientation when I mention stuff like bullish U-turn, inside candlestick, uh, that kind of stuff, momentum, saturation plays, order flow. You'll kind of really get a good grip on it so you can make these actionable trades. If you aren't a part of the Smart Money Alerts free e-letter, I'll post that link below too. So subscribe and then click that link to go over and sign up for that. It's an email I send out every day with a little bit more in depth of exactly what we're looking to trade for the day. So have a great day, everybody. Look for those inside candlestick breakouts. Manage risk. Don't let the news make you think that everything's all fine and dandy. We might get a big move to the upside, but good traders watch both sides. Don't feel like it's done and we're just going higher. Have good discipline in this market. It's still pretty volatile. So have a great day and I'll speak to you later.